This is a chronicle by Norm Tensing. Going through that door, the main door to the Baker Building, had been described in Part 4 of this chronicle. When entering the building, the first thing that is noticed is the enlarged picture of Cheever's Landing by Henry Lewis. The painting depicts an 1847 view of the landing as it appeared then. It is one of two that reside in our building. The original paintings are in the Minneapolis Art Museum and measure approximately 20 by 24 inches. Our society was given permission to enlarge them for our presentation. Armed with the negatives, Al Reeves and Norm Tensing traveled to Madison, Wisconsin to a company called Great Big Pictures. It should be noted that the cost of both of these enlargements was generally generously donated by Al Reeves. The general impression of the front office is that it is finally appointed. The floors of the building are original, as is the wainscoting and cabinetry. The exception is the bookcase below the illustration of the mill that was designed and built by Norman Gustafson. Norm did other cases that are in what we would call the Emma Fisk reading room. He brought fine craftsmanship in fulfilling our needs. Another of those contractors was Skip Lynch. He did the drywall replacement in lowering the ceiling of the front office. In addition to that, he reapplied the chair rail that separates the two colors of the room. The colors were suggested by Bill Scott and Daryl Wongan. They had been active in the Taylor's Falls Historical Society, and they also belonged to the St. Croix Falls Society. Most of the interior and exterior paintings was done by Karen Harris, and she brought her other talents that will be cited later. One of the aims of this printing is to give credit to contractors and past board members who contributed in some unique way to the development within the society. To continue that pattern, the reader can move from the front office and proceed past the walk-in safe, the only one in the community, and observe the pictures of the three Indian chiefs in their full regalia. Chief Dan Mose is pictured with his father and grandfather. Each one has a brief bio that explains the time period that each occupied. The hallway is flanked by a cabinet that houses Indian artifacts. Across from that cabinet is an alcove that holds an organ that was donated to the society from a rural church in the area. The church was located in Rock Creek and was donated to the society by Opal Johnson, the Opal Johnson family. It dates to the late 1800s. The alcove also holds a dramatic picture of the devil's chair, which has since fallen. It is speculated that the fall could have been the work of vandals, or perhaps it fell through natural causes. In that same space is the beautiful desk that was generously donated to the society by Sandy Ball. Sandy is a daughter of the late Dolores Regal. The desk had been in their family for many years and is a fine addition to our collection. Sandy Ball, Rosalie Kittleson, and Bonnie Sawyer have given many hours as volunteers. In that capacity, they have worked on the collection, documents, books, cleaning, and other duties that have enhanced the appearance of the buildings. While it is true that there was no bathroom in the 1882 structure, a nod had to be taken to modernity, and the reconfiguration of space affected not only the bathroom space, but the side entrance door space as well. The fixtures in the bathroom were selected by Darlene and Norm Tensing. They chose what would seem appropriate to the time period. In addition, there is an elevation drawing by Abraham Radcliffe and a watercolor of the 1882 Baker Building by Norm Tensing. Moving toward the side entrance door is a picture of the main street of St. Croix Falls, circa 1912. From the pres presence of the buildings and the clothing style, Another enlarged picture of the valley also occupies this space. At a right angle to the side door is the doorway that had originally been the back door of the Baker Building. It leads into what had been Major Baker's office. 
The two pictures above the original roll-top desk are of Major Baker and his son, Harry. The business was called the Baker Land and Title Company. Before that, it had been called the Cushing Land Agency. The office not only holds that roll-top desk, but also the bookcase that today holds some of the books of another son, Ray Stannard Baker. His picture is above that bookcase. Ray Stannard Baker was a prominent correspondent during the time of President Woodrow Wilson and Teddy Roosevelt. He wrote the eight-volume definitive biography of Woodrow Wilson and accompanied him to the Peace Conference in Versailles. In addition to his expert writing, Ray took the pen name of David Grayson. Under that name, he wrote fiction that speaks to the boyhood in St. Croix Falls. The office of Major Baker brings the visitor full circle in what had been the original building. To enter what we have chosen to call the Emma Fisk Reading Room, there are two steps, steps that are worn through time and carry a concave impression that is reflective of the millions of footfalls that reflect the frequency of use. Why is the room named after Emma Fisk? She had been a respected librarian in the St. Croix Falls School District. She would also be elected to the school board of the district. This elevated room was built as an addition to the Baker Building in 1911. We have come to call it the new addition. It has been reconfigured and primarily serves as the boardroom for the society. There had been a major partition in the middle of the room and when removed, it allowed a more open space to accommodate the table and chairs that now occupy that space. Adjacent to that space is a glassed-in office that had been the office of Harry Baker. The original floors throughout the building were sanded and refinished. All of the radiators throughout the building had been sandblasted and repainted. The board table has a history all its own. It had formerly been the table that was used by the city council. It was then moved to the public library and used to accommodate stacks of books. Duran Blanding, knowing the historical significance, having served as a city attorney for many years, arranged with the library board to exchange that table for three collapsible generic tables that could serve their needs. The city of St. Croix Falls generously moved the table to the space it now occupies. What about the chairs? The chairs had been owned by the Wisconsin Education Association. Their headquarters are in Madison, Wisconsin. They were redoing their boardroom and decided to sell the old chairs at a very reasonable price. Norm Tensing arranged for the chairs to be purchased by the St. Croix Falls Historical Society. They were transported from Madison to St. Croix Falls by a U-Haul truck. It was Mary Beth Blanding, the daughter of Durant and Mary Ellen Blanding, who undertook this task. Once they were in position, it was clear that while there was quality in their construction, they were in need of refurbishing. Using the memorial funds that were generously donated by the Tensing family after the death of Darlene Tensing. They were reupholstered by Gretchen Walkerfuss and the wooden bases were refinished by Karen Harris. The overall effect of the table and chairs speaks to the quality and presence of a tasteful working space. Part five of this chronicle has placed for posterity the names that, that would otherwise be lost. It is the intention of this writing to preserve preserve the rightful place deserved by these people.